Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric the Old Jarhead here. Thanks for watching. We got work to do today. I've got to get that box blade off the tractor and then get the tractor hooked up to the sawmill, drag the sawmill into the yard and start milling some Douglas fir up into two by sixes. So I got to get to it. Now I will tell you, if you haven't seen it, I put out another video where I tore down a bunch of the fencing and just cleaned out my path so that I could get the sawmill into the yard and get the tractor out. So hopefully you check that out, but if not, I'll drop a link down below for you in the comments so you can see it. I need to get keys to the sawmill, fire up the tractor, drop off that box blade, and then hook up to the sawmill, drag the sawmill into the yard and get busy. So let's get to it. I was also going to tell you, I, uh, I thought I heard some rats under the cabin. So I grabbed my pellet gun and I sat out in a chair for 20 minutes or so trying to see, well, maybe they'll come out there once things quiet down. They never did. Before I uh, got back in the cabin, I heard what sounded like the grunt from a bear. And I wonder if a bear had come up behind the cabin somewhere thinking he was going to cruise through here and I was sitting on the other side of the cabin. Now the funny thing about that is that when I was working in the yard over here that one of the neighbor's cats came cruising in and they come and visit all the time. However, I was just working away and all of a sudden I caught movement out of the corner of my eye and so I immediately reached for my pistol. <laughs> And then I saw it was the cat. Oh, okay, fine, you know. And then I went back to work after petting the cat a little bit. I went back to work. I got a bunch of work done. And I was still working pulling fence posts. And then I heard a, a sound like something falling over on the other side of the log cabin structure over there. And of course, same thing, right? Reach for my pistol. So the funny thing is, is that was just the cat pouncing on a mouse or something over there and knocked something over when he did it. It's a big cat. But then I hear the grunt. <laughs> and I'm thinking... You know, some people probably wonder about me carrying a sidearm all the time out here, but uh, trust me, you run into wildlife out here that you just don't expect. And if you're being quiet because you're just relaxing and enjoying the afternoon or hunting rats or something like that, they don't know you're here. They just come cruising through. Could be cougar, bobcat, you know, wolf, coyote, bear, whatever. They just come cruising through because when you don't live here full time, well, even if you do, my friends live here, they just, you know, quarter mile away from me. He's had a bear come up when he was working on his truck and just literally look up across the truck from him. Hello, <laughs> scared that one off. But anyway, enough yakking, let's get to work. The tractor didn't sit that long, but I let the glow plug run, warm up the combustion chambers a little bit before I fire it up. All right, let's get that box blade off. All right, okay. A three point hitch would be nice. I use the draw bar. A three point would allow me to raise or lower the, the hitch. Can't do that with the draw bar, but we'll make it work. All right, so the, the trick here is, will this lower down enough? It might not. Well, it'll always lower down enough if you know what you're doing. Let's get her moved. Yeah, the trouble with the tractor is that those big tires, when you turn, and your three-point hitch can actually connect with your sawmill. So you really got to watch when you're towing it like this. I've already bent up my hydraulic control box a little bit, doing this very thing by myself and, you know, not paying enough attention. So I've learned to just put it in low and creep along. And we're going to try to get it as close to these logs as we can, I think. Make my life easier. Ideally, we put the loader forks right between the, the log deck here. All right, so I just need to back it up a little bit and then drag it in even closer. So I'm going to have to back it up and try to get it as close as I can to where these logs are, I think. Back her up and straighten her out. I think we'll get her in there easy enough. Not quite, eh? A little bit more. <laughs> you tell me when to stop. 
Right there? All right, I'll check, see if you're right. Oh, come on. You could have got me back another foot and a half, folks. You know better than that. Let's see if I'm right. That's pretty good here. That worked just fine. It's looking pretty good. Check this out, folks. I don't have to drive through. <laughs> this is perfect. I'll be able to put my forks on and come right in here, no problem. I mean, this pile here could move. But it, I'd be able to do exactly what I want to do. I do see the mills on a bit of an angle. <laughs> it's in a hole right here on the, on the right-hand side. I didn't catch that before. It's not that big of a deal. You know, I, well, I need some air in that tire, which will pump it up a little bit. And then I really need to get one of those engine covers and I need to take this, um, my umbrella stand off, currently not using anyway. So if I had an engine cover, it would uh, it'd be better. Let's just put it that way. Some of you have asked about my leaving the debarker cover on while milling. And to be honest, folks, it was Woodmiser that suggested I did that. That was a technician at Woodmiser that actually told me to leave it on to keep the water and sawdust and everything else out of it. He said, just don't take it off. I was surprised at that, but all right, let's fire it up. my orange bed rails with me this time. I forgot them last time. <sighs> These kind of lever mills don't have to be level. It's nice when they're a little bit level, depending on the environment you're in. I sometimes like to have it so that it's lower on this end, so that when I let go of the head, if I'm, if I'm pulling it in reverse, it, it rides back on its own little ways. But having it tilted this way a little bit isn't really good. I mean, I should try to pick her up a little bit, and I will. Raise this guy up to 27 and a half inches. That's how you clear the loader arm. So if you've never set one of these up, that's, the, that's why you always see me doing this. You just gotta get it up high enough to get over the loader arms. By the time I let go, it's at about 27 and a half. Oh, I didn't pull my chain off. <laughs> Good job, Eric. You know when I said take the chain off? Oh. That ain't the first time I've done it, let me tell you that. The first thing I like to do see what happens. You see that? It wants to roll back this way. So, oh yeah, don't do that either. That's why, okay, I'm gonna show you something. Let me talk about that a minute because that's important. Boy, that belt is rattling a lot. So let's talk about that. <laughs> Woodmiser tells you when you set one of these mills up to drop that rear outrigger a, a couple few inches off the ground. And they tell you that because when you, when you go to tear the mill down. You, you do it then, right? So you're going to pack the mill up and drive away. You drop that arm so that when you roll the mill head back, the whole mill doesn't tilt like this and then you got problems. It just happened, but because I have the habit of always dropping that rear outrigger, was no big deal. It was a little bit of a surprise <laughs> as the whole mill started to tilt and you saw that, but because you put that outrigger down, no big deal. You just stop go back in the other direction, which is the reverse, till it tilts back again and you're fine. And the funny thing is, is I normally 
don't do what I just did. Um, one of the things I've said before about making YouTube videos is sometimes you're, you're too busy making the video rather than doing what you should be doing, which is running your sawmill, or in this case, setting it up. So anyway, I'm gonna get back to setting it up, but I thought that was a great little lesson to learn on my behalf. Fortunately for me, it wasn't a real bad problem. All right, now, one thing I will tell you is it's too low on the hydraulic side, which is why I did that. That's pretty good. It's still, I think, a little bit downhill. Yeah, we're gonna load this up. That's kind of what happens when you set up your mill. It just sort of, it moves a little bit this way, a little bit that way, and that's okay. So what I can do now is run the head back and lift the front up a little bit more. The ground is soft, so this happens. That'll tighten her up. Not looking too bad. Yeah, we don't want that to go down much. We'll dig the hole for that one. Yeah, it's not too bad. We'll put a we'll put a shim under that side. Now you see how this is um it's not really tight, so we need some shims. So I gotta go get some shims, folks. And you didn't see that that wasn't tight because I didn't have the camera set up for you. All right, with getting that one tight, that one's a little bit loose, so I need some shims. Gotta go get some. Okay. Oh, folks, I gotta tell you, I tweaked my back earlier. Something fierce. And it is uh, killing me. And it's not the part of my back that they've been fixing. <laughs> you know that old saying? You can't win for losing. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh. Oh. I've had this problem oh. since I left the Gulf where I get muscle spasms that tweak my back. Not always my back, it can happen in other places. Shoulders, arms, legs, it doesn't matter, stomach. but. Honestly, the back's the worst spot. Makes it hard to function. <laughs> well, folks, I'm super excited about my log yard. Super excited. You know, having a log yard is like one of those things you dream about. <laughs> Maybe you don't, <laughs> but I do. There we go. Bug it up back or not. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I I did these. And um that one needs to get done. And then I moved the head all the way to the other side. And uh you don't do that. <laughs> I moved everything else, you're supposed to leave the head down there. Oh, good lord, that's um, that's two goof ups today. Now I should call this video, how to set your sawmill up and only two goof ups, <laughs> with only two goof ups. How to set your sawmill up, but only mess up twice. Of course, the, the video's not over yet, so maybe, you know, it's don't, and only mess up thrice. <laughs> it could be, folks, you never know. Uh, that one's gonna be right there. And that one wants to be right there. So, you know, if they want to be somewhere, oh, that hurts. And then, then that's where you put them. Now, the off the offside is not as important as the, the rail side. The rail side is the important side. So you want to make sure that when you do the rail that that side is good and tight. Good and tight. And so you hear me tap them. That's me listening to see if it's actually tight or not. And if it has that tink tink sound, it's not. So we add another shim. 
So for those of you that are new to setting up one of these sawmills, I hope something that I'm doing today helps you out. And if it does, hey, do me a favor. Hit that like button for me. It'll help my video out. We always can use help, folks. Always can use a little help. A little help from our friends. Oh, that's a Joe Cocker reference right there, if I ever heard one. I'm just looking for a shim that won't be too tall. <clears throat> Ideally, <clears throat> this side just touches. It, it doesn't have to be super tight. You know, a lot of guys think that this side has to be really tight. It really doesn't. It's the rail side you need to have nice and tight. That's the side that matters. Keep this rail nice and straight and no a flex. So what you do is you do the back and forth game where you set your, your outriggers and then you go and you run the mill the other side. So this one here is tight. I, I can move the top, but I can't move the bottom. That's not bad at all right there. This one needs a shim. Yep. That's okay. We'll, we'll put some shims under it. Shims are easy. Anytime you make a correction on your mill, you know, maybe you're trying to avoid the pith and so you end up uh, taking a little skim cut out. Go. Oh. Now there's a way to avoid that, which I thought I would talk about on one of my videos. And uh, you know, I'm, I tend to not always do it and you really should. <laughs> so there is a way to avoid skim cutting. All right, I think we're good enough for now because we're gonna beat it into the ground a little bit and reset them anyway. As long as they're tight on that rail, that's all that really matters to me. Run back and forth one more time. Oh yeah, feels good. And the mill kind of jerks back and forth a little bit when you do that. So it sort of works its way into the ground. Oh yeah, we're good. All right, and we're gonna drop that hydraulics down. So you lift up on the hydraulics for the loader, and that pushes those legs down. I know that's kind of opposite of what you think, but exactly what you do. It would make sense if you think about it. You're lifting the loader up off the black feet, and then you make sure this guy's all the way up. Like so. I always let it off and bring it back up again. Now it looks to me like my log's gonna be in my way. It's okay, we'll figure it out. So you put your chest against your loader and disconnect it. Oh, we almost made it, folks. Look at this, we're gonna make it. <laughs> Look at that. Precarious, but we, did, we got it. And that's looking pretty good, so we're good there. We drop those arms down. Maybe. <laughs> All right. I'm going to need a can hook. All right, folks. Well, let's see if I can get that log moved enough. So if I let some hydraulics down, there we go. It's not much. I just wanna release the hydraulics a little bit so that when I start to roll this log, maybe it'll catch a little bit on them. It's good to have it really close to the log deck, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we didn't lower it enough, huh? How to set your sawmill up with only three slight mess ups. All right, I'm gonna fire it up so I've got hydraulics that are running better. Oh yeah, here we go, all right. 
There we go. We'll roll her up a little bit and put some pressure on that. Yeah, not enough. We've got to roll a few logs, folks. How many mix-ups can an old jarhead do? <laughs> the guy that was running the chainsaw on these needs to do a better job. Actually, they were gonna be firewood logs. There we go. Got her. There we go. Look at that. Well, folks, that's how you set up the Woodmiser LT40 sawmill. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward, but I thought I would share it with you just for those that maybe haven't got one yet and you want to get one, or maybe you just got one and you don't set it up and tear it down very often. You know, the first few times you do it, you kind of you kind of forget things. So <laughs> maybe the 200th time you do it, you forget things. <laughs> At least I didn't forget the outrigger. So <laughs> it is kind of fun trying to do this and do it on film and think of everything while you're doing it. But that's how you set up your sawmill, folks. I hope that helps you out. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button for me. We got the sawmill sitting in the log yard now. So in the next video, I'm gonna mill up some Doug fir. See you then. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.